The FlySky FSI6X and FlySky FSI6S are excellent and widely used transmitter in the FPV quad and airplane world. In this video, I will answer the following question. Can I make them better? Here, through better, I understand mainly to increase the range of these transmitters. The study and the hardware modification will be done on the FlySky FSI6S. But the same steps, with the similar results, can be done on the FlySky FSI6X. So, the main idea is to replace one of the two internal antennas with an antenna with a higher gain. In this case, the antenna was taken from a 2.4 GHz radio signal buster and it has a gain of 6 dBi. Common sense tells us that indeed we'll have a higher flight range. But how big will it be? It is worth doing such a transformation compared to the cost of extra items and the working time involved? This video will respond to all of these questions and to other very interesting questions. Now first I will present the results obtained by both systems with and without an external antenna. Next, the average value for each transmitter and in the end how to mount the new antenna to the transmitter. But before we get started with the analysis, please consider subscribing to my channel. So, based on the RSSI indicator and on the distance between the transmitter and receiver, measured with a GPS placed on the quadcopter, the new range of the modified transmitter can be easily highlighted. Let's start! In this experiment, the quadcopter is the same in both videos. The only difference is the presence of the external antenna on the left. To have both videos of the same length, in the left video the quadcopter flew with a higher speed, almost double than in the right video. Also, I try to follow the exact flight path in both videos. So, it is very impressive. Using an external antenna of 6 dBi, we get more than 200 meters in range. As you saw, it is challenging and questionable to get the exact point where the RSSI drops to a specific value. In order to get reliable and trusted information, for each of the two cases, 20 measurements were done. We have here the first one and the last one, and in the end, an average is computed for each RSSI value. In the same mode, we have all the measurement here, and the average values for the case when an unmodified RC transmitter was used. As you see from both tables, the same RSSI value is obtained at different distances. These variabilities are generated by different ambient noise levels, by additional signal interference in the environment, by different fly altitudes, by different flying paths, and so on. As a direct result, when an external antenna was used, I got a maximum distance of 833 meters and a minimum of 597 meters for an RSSI of 60. In the case of the unmodified RC transmitter, I got a maximum distance of 689 meters and a minimum distance of 475 meters. To be able to make a better comparison of the obtained results, a new table was constructed based only on the average value of the other two tables. In the last line of the new table, a difference is made between the two previous lines. 
What really interests us is a distance gain that we can obtain by using an external antenna when we fly at a distances places towards the sensitive limit of the receiver mounted on the drone. So, from the third table, you can see that we gain, on average, between 73 meters and 104 meters more by using an external antenna. But, in my opinion, the last two average values for an RSSI of 60 and 65 are under-evaluated. From the video, you can see the drone flying over a hill. In the last part of the flight, I also came closer to the ground when I approached the top part of the hill. Moreover, the tables show the RSSI value between 60 and 100. But on several occasions I flew by mistake with RSSI value around 30 to 35. The same data is presented in the graphical format. The upper graph represents the average values when an external antenna was used. The bottom graph in black represents the average distances obtained with an unmodified RC transmitter. The vertical difference between the two graphs are the average gain obtained by using the external antenna. This is the inside part of the transmitter. To get here, you can follow the upper link to see how to open the transmitter. Now, here we have the first and the second antenna and the places where the antennas are connected are here. In the second picture, you can see a more clear view with the first antenna. So, what components do we need? There are only two components. A 6dBi antenna and a pigtail cable with an SMA female connector to an end and an IPX UFL female connector to the other end. The price of these two components is around 6 up to 11 bucks. To mount the new antenna, make a hole in the top part of the case, through which insert the SMA connector. Next, connect the IPX UFL connector to the main board and isolate the original IPX UFL connector of the second antenna belonging to the RC transmitter. Now, if we compare the internal components of the FSI6X presented here with the FSI6S presented previously, you will see that they are almost identical. We also have two internal antennas, so it is straightforward to replace this first antenna with the one placed outside. Replacing one of the internal antennas with an outside antenna having a higher gain increases the distance where you can control the drone without any risk. So, taking into account the low cost of the components involved and the easiness of the whole mounting process of the new antenna, I believe with conviction that it's worth making this simple improvement of the RC transmitter. That was all and thank you very much for watching this video.